Today we are exploring Robin Hood's Bay and I am so excited because not only has this place been highly recommended by our viewers, but just looking at the water from the car park is, it's stunning. It's so beautiful and we haven't even gotten down into the village yet. <laughs> One of the things that Robin Hood's Bay is known for is its narrow twisting lanes. And we've already come across our first one. It is lovely. I can't wait until we see more, but we are just still making that trek down to the bottom. It just got very narrow in the streets here. I love that there are all of these colorful doors. There are all kinds of boutique shops. There's even a store for Carly, which she apparently knows is for her because she is very intently smelling the door. Doodle bones are sold here. They sell Carly's. <laughs> Just kidding. We've been calling Carly Doodle Bone because we bought her one of these harnesses when we first got over here. So it's funny that they have more Doodle Bones in there. We have encountered so many other dogs that Carly is very excitable right now. You okay? This really is one of the most unique places we've been to here in England. It's really interesting. You kind of, it is one of those places that you kind of have to be here. I think that the camera doesn't quite do it justice. I, I feel like you would need like a 360 camera to show just like how everywhere you look is so interesting and something different to look at. Yeah. We were walking down the hill. It's a little tea room cafe called Ella Stell's. So Kara thought you got to stop and have some cream tea, which I'm not against. It looks lovely. Jam's a little tart. The scones are nice and soft. Yeah, that's good. That was scrumptious. And if you ask me, the best kind of breakfast. Let's see what else we can find around here. <laughs> How interesting that that is from the La Brea Tar Pits. Come all the way to England, see something from, from LA. <laughs> I was, thought you were going to say see something from my girl. Oh wait, that was my girl too that they go to the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we finally made it to the bottom. I can see the water. The tide is in. Very much so. But we're gonna wait till it goes out. Last year, we came to Whitby, and uh, that is when primarily a lot of you said, you gotta also go to Robin Hood's Bay. It's just down the road. Apparently you can walk between the two. We're actually staying here in Robin Hood's Bay, which we'll show you a little bit later, but uh, apparently you can also walk from coast to coast. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm not sure where it starts, but I did see some patches and t-shirts at one of the stores we walked past that was had the beginning and the end on it. Interesting. Gotta love England for having miles and miles of footpaths all over the place. Yeah. We were gonna check out the seawall, but it looks like it, a severe storm has come through here recently. Yeah, it looks like they're doing some construction. <laughs> but I guess that's why the seawall's here, huh? The old Coast Guard station here is now a visitor center. There is a little museum inside that's free. It's not very big, uh, but it does have some interactive stuff. Our friend's kid would enjoy that aspect. And it has some great views of this area. So it's, it's worth popping in, especially if you have children. She's looking for where I am. Do you think she'll find me? Do you think she'll notice where I am? I'm right here. Hi, look, there I am. Nope, she didn't see me. <gasps> There I am, there I am. How dare I leave you? I'm here for the shanty. I'm here for the shanty too. Oh! <laughs> everyone loves a good sea shanty. I have to say, I really appreciate how everyone's boats are just out and about here waiting, waiting to be used. Let's see if we can access the beach yet. much beach to access yet, is yeah, it? Yeah, with the tide in, there's pretty much, what, like 10 feet of beach over there. <laughs> I think that little cove we found earlier was a little bit more peaceful because I yeah, think everyone's definitely. just waiting until they can go down to the beach. Yeah. There's this place here selling donuts by the seaside, which is just, I think, a pretty British thing. Like, we've seen that in several seaside towns we've come across, and I don't really see that in the U.S. It kind of makes sense to me, though, because I feel like people here spend more 
holidays by the seaside during the winter even than we would. So a hot coffee and a hot donut sounds pretty good in the winter or the fall. And I guess maybe hot buttered toast too. <laughs> yeah, that one's weird to me. <laughs> The beach area itself was pretty crowded and the tide's still in and won't be back out for like at least an hour or so. So we stopped by a nearby pub and got some beers. Cheers for some Yorkshire beers. Sat and had a pint with a lovely view watching the tide go out. Also watching cars try to fight themselves coming down here. I guess you are not supposed to uh, drive down here. They ask you not to. They ask you to park at one of the car parks at the top of the hill, but it doesn't stop people from doing it. But it doesn't look like a fun arrangement, especially when there's as many people as there are around here. I think the tide's out enough we can go out though. It always comes back to the shanty too. We finally made it to the actual beach. The tide is finally on its way out and honestly it was getting very very crowded. People just waiting to finally be able to go out on the beach but now that there's plenty of space to do that it is not feeling quite so congested. I have a little bit less anxiety about it so that's good. <laughs> but I think that's kind of been our consensus today. Very very lovely village but like very popular and not a lot of places for those people to go. Yeah, all these people behind me were at one point corralled in this little area over here. I bet this one's excited that she finally gets to play in some sand, not the water. She's not a water dog. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Now, apparently there are all kinds of creatures that you can find out here in the rock pools. I don't know where we have to find them though. Carly's made a friend. She misses her friends back home because this is like the most she's wanted to play with other dogs in a long time, huh? We walked on the beach. Carly made friends. We saw the famous ice cream van that comes out in the low tide. I feel like we accomplished at least a little bit of a Robin Hood's Bay beach day. But I do think we want some ice cream. I feel like we saw some ones that looked like they were good and homemade and local. Let's go try one of those. Just noticed that this flag says that they won the Seaside Award of 2023. I'll explain why it's a popular place to visit. Yeah. I don't know who's giving out all these awards though. I think one of the things that Robin Hood's Bay is known for is a lot of stories about its smuggling past. And I think that this might be one of the smugglers tunnels, but I'm not totally sure. I just know that they exist here. Smuggling was a big thing. And that makes sense because it weirdly reminds me of another town known for smuggling or village. And that is Rye down in the south. Kind of random, but both lovely. I also read online that there is a smuggler's tour that you can kind of do your own walking tour and that there are plaques around. However, I don't know where that starts or ends and we haven't seen a single plaque. So apparently that's an option, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're bad at the smuggling, the smuggling tourism aspect today, I guess. We're not good smugglers. <laughs> we are we? not good smugglers. <laughs> We found this shop called the Higgledy Pig. It is this really neat combination of like gin, beer, music, and art. We picked up some Yorkshire beers that we're gonna try back at our place in a little bit, but I think first we need some ice cream before we head that way. When your ice cream shop is also an old fashioned candy shop, you gotta get the cinder toffee ice cream, yeah, right? Yeah, I think you do. How is it? That's quite tasty. Yep, I like it. I forget what cinder toffee even is. I just remember we tried it once. And it was crunchy? It's kind of like honeycomb-ish candy. Okay. Carly is like, excuse me, I, I like ice cream too, please. We've had cream tea, we've had pints of beers, we have more pints of beers to enjoy, and we just had some ice cream. I guess it's time to work off all the, the things that we've had by making the truck back, back up the hill. Yeah. <laughs> circle back to the fossil, the fossil shop. shop yeah. And since I didn't hardly even look for fossils, maybe I'll buy one. All the signs that are like, look up, look up. And then you look up and you're like, whoa, those are pretty amazing. Yeah, I think you're allowed to call yourself a fossil museum if you have those, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
knew you could buy fossils for as little as like 50p. That is incredible. Although some of the ammonites and, and cooler things were a little bit more expensive. I thought I was gonna just buy one because we've been fossil hunting three times and haven't found anything yet. Although today I would barely call it hunting. Yeah. But I think I'm gonna just hold out. I'm gonna wait until we actually find one. I mean, I guess I did find what I think is a sea, sea urchin, urchin. Yeah. but I'm, I'm holding out for an ammonite. So I guess maybe next time we come back, we can plan something with Jason and Josh and we can all find all the ammonites. <laughs> A couple hundred years ago, like by the 1820s, the fishing industry was so booming here in Robin Hood's Bay that it actually was a bigger industry than Whitby, which is very interesting considering how small it is. Welcome to our villa. It is called Villa Neptune. It is part of the Rountain House, which is uh, two luxury accommodations that are part of Maison Perfette. Uh, we stayed in one of their other properties when we were in the Yorkshire Dales. We were only there one night and we were sad that we weren't there longer because it was one of the best days that we have ever had, especially here in the UK. This is their property in Robin Hood's Bay. Um, there are two villas. We have the bottom floor, the ground floor villa that is a two bedroom, one and a half bath. The first and second floors on the upstairs are another villa, I think called the Captain's Residence, that um, are an even larger accommodation. That one has the stunning views, but this one has the hot tub. We have already been here two nights, as you can maybe see by our stuff scattered around a little bit. Big couch is comfortable, the hot tub is great, the bed is one of the more comfortable beds we've we've been in on this trip and they have a really nice fully stocked kitchen too. Fully stocked in terms of pots and pans and dishes and silverware and all that kind of great stuff. And a bottle of champagne. Yeah, there was Prosecco. We already drank that. Maison Parfait have locations all over uh, Yorkshire. So you should definitely check out their website and see some of the properties that they have. Consider booking with them when you book your next holiday. Uh, we certainly will consider booking with them in the future. Although this, uh, this day they did provide for us um, for featuring them in this video. So thank you Maison Parfait for hooking us up with another luxury stay. We have made our way back to Whitby, a place that we've been to before, but we absolutely loved. Uh, I just love the Abbey ruins up on the hill. I love that our horse friend or our pony friend is still there, the one we saw last year, the first time we came. And we started our day on a 20 minute boat tour of the marina and it was lovely. We just, a guy was like, hey, we're dog friendly, come on in. And we were like, mm, okay. And while I am no means against a boat ride, I knew we were going on this boat 10 feet away when I saw it was pet friendly on the sign before the man even told us to get on. <laughs> it's true, I love a good boat ride. And for only five pounds, uh, you know, it's a nice leisurely stroll around the area, pointing out some of the highlights of Whitby and uh, learning a little bit more about the fishing industry. So a yeah, good pretty one. Much covered yeah. the whole bay. Yeah, would recommend. <laughs> I think my favorite fact that we learned on the boat tour is that the 199 steps that go up to the abbey and the churchyard originally were wood and it wasn't until the 1700s that they changed them to stone. I just thought that was fascinating. It's definitely more lively here today, uh, it being August, than when we were here last year in April. But there's also a lot more going on. Like there are a bunch of vendors selling things. I mean, I was very tempted by glitter tattoos, let me tell ya. <laughs> also noticing this souvenir shop we definitely went in before has Whitby Rock, which is something that people told us we needed to try. A candy of some yeah, sort? Okay. Yeah. So this is Whitby Rock. I didn't realize it came in so many flavors. We saw some of these in Robin Hood's Bay yesterday. Last time we were in Whitby, we tried fish and chips at a place called Keyside, and they were very good. But a lot of you gave us suggestions of places to come next time. And probably the most suggested place was the Magpie Cafe. I guess these are some of the top rated fish and chips, not just in Whitby, but in 
the UK. And so we got some fish and chips takeaway to eat by the seaside. Or at least we get to sit and eat them with this lovely view of pleasure land, which is a favorite of ours. <laughs> Jeremy's happy because he got himself some curry sauce. And that haddock looks pretty tasty. Oh, that's nice tartar sauce. And the breading on the fish is really light and crispy. And the fish is, is good. And the chips had a nice fluffy inside with a crispy outside. Yeah, that's all really good. I agree. You know, I would say that very good, worth the wait. But if you don't want to wait in the long line to get into the Magpie, I would also say that the Quayside that we had last time and probably any number of chippies around here have good fish and chips. I mean, you are by the seaside. I think for Jeremy, it sounds like he'd be okay with going back just for the curry sauce yeah, alone. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but the overall fish and chips it's were good. like totally just good. Yeah. on par with the other ones we've had. Carly, how was your bite? 10 out of 10, like always. Yep. <laughs> so we got told that while we were in Whitby, we really needed to try a lemon top, but they also had a strawberry top and I kind of wanted to try them both. So here we go. All right, that's nice. Ooh, it's tangy, but yeah, those are both really good. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. I don't love lemon things, but I love that. But that's pretty nice, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's almost like a dole whip float or something. something that combination like that. Yeah. of like the citrus of like, the, the citrus of the sorbet with the, uh, the creaminess. Uh, yeah, that's pretty tasty. That's pretty good. Oh, the strawberry one's really good too. No, they're both really nice, huh? <laughs> that sign didn't lie. It was truly scrumptious. It was really lovely. Both of them were no, top now. notch. Come. I just noticed that there's a beach over there. Maybe next time we'll have to come check out the sandy beach down there. Came up over here to see the whalebone arch and the Captain Cook statue. Both very neat and unique things to see here in Whitby. I don't know a lot about the history of Captain Cook, but I think people told us when we did our last video in Whitby that he's actually from a different town somewhere here, I believe on the Yorkshire coast, but not necessarily Whitby. Um, however, the only thing I remember learning about in my US history class is I'm pretty sure he's the one that like brutally died in Hawaii, right? Is that right? I think you're right, but I'm not sure. I think that's why there's a Captain Cook's at the Polynesian. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's, that's my US history for you. There you go, this sign right here says he came to Whitby in 1746. So he's not from Whitby, he just lived here. We have been all over Great Britain and I don't think there's a single place we've been that we didn't like, but Whitby and I think Yorkshire in general are just very special. Whitby is definitely one of my favorite places uh, here in England. Anyway, thank you so much for coming along. Thank you again to Maison Parfait for uh, allowing us to stay in one of their beautiful properties. Make sure you check out their website. Uh, they have properties here in Whitby and Robin Hood's Bay and all over Yorkshire. Thank you to our patrons for always supporting our channel. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you should check out our first trip to Whitby where we did a bunch of things, including the spooky Abbey right over here. <laughs>